Welcome to the Chase Benefits Online. Today we hear about Jesus feeding the 5,000 with only a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish, and about his walking on the water. And we ask ourselves what these stories really tell us about God. So as our service begins, we say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear now the words of this week's collect. Living presence of abundance, feeding us when we are hungry, calming us when we are afraid. Meet us in our need when we least expect it, and renew our trust in your providence day by day. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Elizabeth is now going to read this week's Gospel. A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realised they were about to come and take him by force to make him a king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, got into a boat and started across the lake to Capernaum. It was now dark and Jesus had not yet come to them. The lake became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the lake and coming near to the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I, do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. In cultures throughout the world, food is still a hugely important part of social gatherings and encounters whether in the home, at church, or even out and about in the market square, food and friendship go hand in hand. When I was on placement in Ethiopia back in 1992, I remember staggering back to the chaplaincy in Addis Ababa after a second or perhaps third lunch, carrying containers full of traditional hearty Ethiopian dishes. The problem is often the opposite of the problem we see in our reading from John's Gospel. There is often too much food and not enough people to eat it, rather than the other way round. The multiplication of the loaves and fishes is a story about God's abundance. Andrew asked Jesus, Here is a boy who has five barley loaves and two fish, 
but what are they among so many people? But when Jesus distributes the bread and the fish, everyone has as much as they want and are satisfied. Like the wedding at Cana, Jesus meets the needs of the assembled crowd with vastly more than they could have imagined, as there must have been gallons of wine left off, over after at Cana, so there are twelve baskets full of leftovers here on the hillside. As he invites the crowd to sit down, to give thanks and to eat together, Jesus shows them the overwhelming, abundant hospitality. And this hospitality says something about who he is, about who God is. Once they have all eaten, they realised what has happened and they begin to say to one another, this is indeed the prophet who is come into the world. They recognise that something significant had happened, that Jesus is a prophet. Perhaps they recalled the episode from Two Kings where Elisha feeds a hundred people during a famine with only 12 barley loaves and some fresh ears of grain. But the crowd on the hillside do not fully understand what has happened. They do not fully understand who Jesus is. In the fourth century, St Gregory of Nyssa tried to answer the question of how we can know the truth of the Incarnation, the truth of the fact that God dwelt among us. By way of an answer, he says that we should look to Jesus' miracles. St Gregory writes, It is a mark of God to give man life, to afford food and drink, to care for those in want, to heal the sick, to exercise an equal sway over all creation, over land, sea and air, and above all to be vanquishers of death. And if these things are the things that God does, that only God can most completely do, we see this in the miracles of Jesus, that God has truly come among us. As Gregory writes, everything by which we know God is evident in the record about Jesus. To feed the hungry is a sign of God's presence revealed to us in Jesus. The Lord's abundant hospitality is not just a prophetic sign, but a sign of the Incarnation. Our vocation as Christians is to share in God's redeeming work. And there is much hunger in our world, literal famine, poverty and spiritual hunger. When I was in Ethiopia, the famine that had ravaged that country was only recent history. And perhaps that explains why the abundance of food was such an important part of their culture. But whether we help out at a food bank or cook for our neighbours from time to time or donate to charities working with the poorest communities in the world, we can all share in this divine work. Feeding the hungry is a sign of God's presence. From the famine at Gilgal in Two Kings to the present day, God makes himself known through this particular sign of loving care. We might not be able to work miracles, to make a tin of beans stretch to feed the multitudes, but little by little we can show to others the love of God, the God who meets us in our deepest needs and gives us abundant life.
Deborah is now going to lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Generous God, you provide for us, you feed us, you support us, you love us, you fill us with the glory of your presence. Lord, as we have greatly received, so may we share with others. Loving Father, give us today our daily bread. Creator God, bless all who provide us with our needs. We pray for the farmers and the fishermen of our world, for those living and working in areas where crops have failed, for all who have suffered through storms and disasters. We remember those who transport food and who sell it in shops. Loving Father, give us today our daily bread. Gracious God, we pray for all who are without resources, homes where there is hunger and poverty, places where people suffer from malnutrition, all peoples who are trapped in debt, for those who have lost homes or livelihoods. Loving Father, give us today our daily bread. Merciful God, we pray for all who are storm-tossed at this time, for all who are struggling to survive. We pray for friends and loved ones who are ill, for those who can no longer cope alone, for the fearful and the anxious. Loving Father, give us today our daily bread. We remember all who have gone beyond the storms of life, and are now at peace and in your eternal presence. We pray for friends and loved ones departed. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And so now we come to the peace. Christ feeds us with his word and gives us all we need to spread the good news of his love. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you for joining us for this service today. There will be another online service next Sunday. Details will be on the bulletin and the Benefice website. For those who are able to join us in person, there will also be services at 8am in Enstone and 10am in Spelsbury. But now our service ends with a blessing. God fill you with good things, make you strong to proclaim the word and give to you and all those who you love the peace and joy of the kingdom and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.